Good morning. Well, we're here with Andrew today and he is going to tell us about some of the fabulous clocks we have here in the warehouse. Um, as you can see, he's standing next to some that are really awesome, but there's more to come. So uh, stick with us and he's, yeah, he's gonna um, give us a lay of the land. So thanks a lot, Andrew, it's all yeah. you. You bet. Um, yeah, it's an exciting time to have so many really interesting clocks. This one just came in last week. We've had some of these for a while um, and some of them just came in. This is a Seth Thomas right around uh, 1900. I believe the case is possibly a little bit older. It's in beautiful running condition. The Seth Thomas movement inside is in a different case than it, than it likely came with. Um, we know that because there's another, there's a second gong in the back of the case that does not belong to the movement that's in the case. But it is in beautiful condition, working condition, um, and it, it just runs and runs. It's got a very, very quiet chime, um, so it's not going to keep the whole household awake. Um, it also has a lot of other details, like um, it came with some instructions from a previous owner. There are some original hands. It, it looks like a few things were done in 2018 to restore it. Um, so there's some original hands in a bag that come with it. Um, and there's cards inside and a couple of markings that just show when it was serviced. And uh, that's typical for clocks. You'll find markings that show its service. So we're asking 1800 for this clock. Again, a beautiful, interesting clock. One of the things I love about this case is that it has flame, twisted flame finials. I don't think I've ever seen those on another clock. I haven't looked at tons of uh, grandfather clocks, but it, they're just gorgeous finials. So it's pretty unique on this uh, federal case here. So anyway, that's a beautiful mahogany clock with a uh, early uh, with an antique uh, Seth Thomas movement in it again about 1900 to 1905. Um, yeah, the face is is beautiful. It's gorgeous painted. That. Yeah, that would be a hand painted. Um, it's a brass face with uh, painting on it, and even the numerals are really interesting. Look at the one on the uh, the ten and the, and the eleven <laughs> there. It's like really cool. Looks like a bird a little bit. Yeah. yeah. That's so Seth cool. Thomas, I actually grew up in the town next to Seth Thomas, possibly why I'm so, uh, <laughs> it's Thomaston, Connecticut. I grew up in Litchfield, Connecticut. That's probably why I'm so interested in clocks because they were all around me. There are five major clock companies in the uh, Connecticut area, maybe six actually. Um, so the next one, if we come around oh. here, is this uh, wonderful cuckoo clock that has been in our offices for a while and we hate to see it go because it's <laughs> such a wonderful clock. We put it on the wall and it runs. It's not very old. It's probably uh, 20 to 25 years old. Uh, I guess that makes it vintage. So, um, And it, it, it runs beautifully. It just runs and runs. It's, uh, it's only a one-day clock. You have to wind it every day. The weights will all drop down and you saw me pull the chain to, to wind it. And we'll make this one go so you can see the cuckoo. So we'll do the 12. It'll be a lot of keeps, a lot of times. What a singing voice. Yep. Yeah, so it's really exciting when you get a cuckoo clock and the, all the bellows work and the cuckoo pops out, everything works right. That's what we like, so. That so that cool. one, it's a nice and expensive one. Um, I don't know if I can keep myself from buying it myself to <laughs> put back in our offices. It brings joy to us. So. Oh, that's great. Um, the next one is another really interesting yeah. clock. This is right around uh, 1920. And this one came from Germany originally. This has a Kleininger um, movement in it, which uh, Kleininger only started uh, making movements in uh, 1917. So it's only a few years into their making movements. This one chimes on the quarter hour. It's got some pretty strong gongs to it and we'll uh, light it up in a second. It's a three weight driven clock. Um, so you, you wind it by pulling the chains again. Um, it's got a lot of gorgeous details. These are actually machine cut. This is when they started mechanizing carving. So they're not hand cut, but they're machine cut. It is an oak case. Um, a lot of these are in a darker um, walnut or uh, mahogany case. This one's a lighter color. Uh, and it just, it runs great and it chimes beautifully. The weights are all in good condition. We do have a few minor condition issues. There's a scratch here that probably can be worked out. Um, and there's a few things that aren't visible that are uh, also uh, apparent um, if you look around closely. But anyway, it's a wonderful clock. Um, I'll get it to chime here. Yeah. <clears throat> That's cool. So we'll chime on the quarter hour. 
There we go. Do the same thing we'll go to noon so we can hear the whole chime so this chimes on the quarter hour a different chime for each one so if you're away from it you'll know whether it's 11 30 or 11 45. then we'll go to the hour so this is westminster chime as most people know. it's really beautiful and soft and kind of like a yeah mel a yeah melody. it's got nice long rods in the back yeah tell the difference. Yeah. So this clock will be on um, Marketplace, communityforkmarketplace.org, um, by, probably by tomorrow. It'll be $1,400. And um, this one's already listed on the Marketplace, Yes, right? this one's this already one's listed on Marketplace. I believe we have $1,800 on that one. And the cool. cuckoo clock is $39. I love the rounded top on that. That is so cool. Yeah, it's a beautiful, I would consider it an Art Deco era. It's got a little oh, bit of Art Nouveau yeah. in it, um, of course, from the floral swoops and things. But yeah, beautiful, beautiful clock. That's super cool. From Germany. So here's another Seth Thomas clock. And I grew up with a clock um, at my grandmother's that was exactly like this. Um, and it, it rang all night long when I was <laughs> sleeping in the room where the clock was. Uh, and basically, it's a Westminster chime. Um, same thing that it, it uh, chimes on the quarter hours to tell you um, which quarter it is. Uh, it's in really beautiful condition, except for a couple of bubbles. There's a little bubble right here in the um, uh, veneer, and there's one over on the side, I believe, right there as well. So anybody with a little furniture experience could um, glue those back down with no problem. Um, and this one runs great also. It's a very strong running clock. Um, this one has some uh, paperwork in the back so we know exactly which clock it is. Oh, cool. Um, and we've, you know, done some research on it. It's a pretty good quality um, clock of this type. So anybody looking for a really strong um, storied uh, mantle clock can, um, might consider this one. So yeah. we get... I love the color in this, like, yeah, this curve. It's, it's, it's really just... rich. Yeah, yeah, again, it has, you know, it's got, you know, signs of age. Um, and we'll get this one to chime. So oh, that's beautiful. A quarter hour. We should go to the. And I believe this one's a 1940s clock. Let me close it up. pushing time ahead here. <laughs> Man, that's a great one. We do also have, this is a actually a Korean regulator clock. Um, it's a 31 day clock. It does run, it's not level right now, so it's not running at this time. But if you want a clock that's gonna run for 31 days without winding, that's, oh. that's the clock. And it just needs to be carefully um, wound. It may need service, like a, a good cleaning, but it does run. We've had it running quite a bit. Um, that's also a fairly inexpensive clock at $95. Um, very reliable, um, good case, and it's probably about uh, 40 years old. Cool. And then onward to the, the most interesting one by far that we have. Um, this is a Seth Thomas calendar clock with, uh, I believe it's a, a calendar movement by a company called Andrews. Um, it is missing some parts. It would normally have a calendar uh, face in here, which would have all the days around it. Those are available online. You can uh, uh, buy them to replace it. And it also would have a hand here that would point to the day. The calendar mechanism does not work in this clock, but it's, it's all there. I, I didn't see any missing parts, so I'm pretty sure it can work. Um, but again, it, it's a really interesting clock from about 18, between 18, I think they started these in 1870 and went to about 1890 making these. Um, 
again, a Seth Thomas clock. And the, the great thing about this clock is it has quite a bit of information with it, like its instruction on the inside. So there's this directions oh, for wow. setting up the clock right there. It is so cool. And um, um, forgive me, clock people, but I used a Bobesh from a chandelier as the <laughs> plumb bob, so it doesn't run correctly now. It needs a it needs a um, pendulum bob um, to uh, run correctly. So the timing is not going to be right as, uh, with that crystal thing in there. I just needed to show that it runs. Oh, but so many cool features to yeah. it, and uh, there's a lot of neat things on it. And this one does come with a key. Um, we don't have keys for all the clocks. The uh, keys are very readily available. Um, this one has a key to lock it and a key to wind it. So um, it's ready to go. So this one, I believe we were asking 295 for. Um, it does have a few veneer issues up at the top here. Um, so it does need a little bit of case repair and clean up. There's a little refinishing needed here. But the great thing about this clock that's often damaged is all of the curved veneer here is intact, except there's a little chip right there. Um, so that's really a wonderful thing to have all of that intact. So. Yeah, that's gorgeous. All right. There are so, more clocks, everybody. Can you believe it? More? <laughs> but wait. And, and my, yeah, and there will be more in the future. So we have a whole bunch of little alarm clocks here. This is a fairly modern one. It's probably 15, 20 years old, but it's running. Um, it's got a little second hand on it that you can see going. It's a little alarm clock, like a cute alarm clock. Um, so that, that's just a fun one, very inexpensive. I think we got nine bucks on it. That'll be here in the store. And then so we have that one definitely reminds us of uh, uh, Looney Tunes or yes, Saturday yeah, morning cartoons. It. You got it, yeah. <laughs> and then there's this one. This is a plastic. I don't even know who made Kino clocks. Just another inexpensive one. But again, it runs when you wind these up and they run. It's pretty exciting because so many of them don't. Uh, and then the next one is is one of my favorites that I've had in a long time. And it's, I believe, a 1935 or 19. I believe this is actually 1927. I'm going to have to fix that tag. Um, and it's a Big Ben. Um, so this one is a very unique clock because it says loud alarm on it. Um, <laughs> apparently there was a little bit of a experiment to make a loud alarm because some people weren't waking up with the quieter ones. Um, so this is the only one of the uh, Big Bens that I know of that has the loud alarm on it. So it's a very uncommon piece. Um, it's perfect for restoration. It certainly has some little uh, uh, paper issues with the uh, dial and everything. Uh, it does not have a luminous dial, which is good. It doesn't have radium in it, which can be toxic. Um, but anyway, it's a great little clock and it runs um, and, and is a really interesting piece of uh, early American history. Um, they made Big Ben's from, I believe they started in the early 1900, like 1905 or so. And um, they probably still make a version of it today. The one issue this one has is that the winder for the actual clock uh, have it zip tied on there. It came off. It you could still put it on to wind the clock, but it should be taken probably to a jeweler to have a screw put in it uh, to actually attach it permanently. It's what's called swaged on there, and the swaging loosened up over time. Um, so the winder is there. That's the good thing, but it it um, does need to be reattached. So it needs a little bit of work if somebody wants to restore it. But a really cool um, piece of history there. That is awesome. The tick is really great too. <laughs> That's not yeah, I told you before. I have I've had a clock on my bedstand. Uh, they don't bother me. Once you've uh, been with the clock for a while, it doesn't bother you at all. So, yeah. well, gosh, well, th thanks a lot, Andrew, for showing us. There's some. I mean, they're all really, really cool. If you guys want to see the clocks, uh, they're all here at the warehouse. You can come down any day between 12 and 5 p.m. and uh, and, and check them out. And uh, also, as we mentioned, a couple of them are going to be on the marketplace. This one's already there. That one will be up there shortly. And that's communityforkliftmarketplace.org. And uh, yeah, we'll have photos and uh, more info and uh, uh, price. And you can also purchase online as well. But um, all right, well, hey, if you have any questions about the clocks or anything else here at our nonprofit, uh, please put them in the comments and uh, I'll get back to you or I will forward them on to Andrew. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks a lot for joining us and uh, have a great day.